this, rather than, like, saying the actual facts. Anyway, that's what new is me, is being specifically angry about the logic class. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, also we played uh, well, Giant I mean, Robot uh, uh, D&D, uh, where the, sheets, the character uh, sheets involved you rolling two dice to figure out the width and length of your attack to play like a battleship game to do damage to each other's parts. And well, see, that's much more interesting than the sub publishing class section, uh, where my your audio is cutting in and out on me, so I'm not... Oh, is it still I cutting in and out some of that me? stuff, but... I, I think it likes robots more than it likes testing, you ranting testing. about self publishing How is my audio quality? That sounds good now. So apparently it just censored my overt negativity. Let me try again. Ask me what's <laughs> new with Richard. Oh, what's new with you, Richard? Oh, okay. So for RPG Club, we were trying a new indie robot game we got sent. I played For the King with you a bit, which was pretty good. We're preparing to do a gift exchange over Christmas. I'm looking forward to that. I have a few weeks left Ooh. left of the term. And then it's Christmas break, and I got some Christmas break shifts, which is lovely, because I enjoy having some income over Christmas. And okay, like, uh, random question time, actually. Ooh, now we're getting uh, Well, not exactly a random question, but uh, do you like Christmas cake? So, there's a series of different kinds of Christmas cake I've had in my life. Yeah, One okay. of the things I've been blessed with with various kitchen managers is various qualities of Christmas baked goods over my years. Mm -hmm. So I had one kitchen manager, Redacted, who came in with this, like, Jamaican rum raisin Christmas cake. Mm -hmm. Thing was delicious. And mildly flammable levels of rum in it. Like, that rum wasn't cooked <laughs> off. That was just like, no, what you do for the glaze is you whisk powdered sugar into rum until it's a glaze and glaze it with the rum. <laughs> Thing was amazing. Okay. Mm. Conversely, at one point or another, Cassie had a Christmas cake. It was amazing. So, mm. when you think of, like, the sitcom, this fruitcake so dense you can bludgeon someone to death trope food, mm -hmm. yeah, we've been conditioned by media to hate on the Christmas cake, probably due to some sort of racism. But that I doesn't do mean that, that you can't make a delicious cake around Christmas. I just don't think Christmas cake is actually a thing. I think it's one of those sitcom situations where they've gaslit us into thinking there's a singular dish called Christmas cake, and that's never really been a thing. Well, I just I'm like my my girlfriend is is getting into the spirit with some Christmas baking. We want to yes. like send send cookies and chocolates and so and there's a small chance we talk about Christmas break goods and snacks for the next hour. <laughs> like it's, it's a, a small pretty, chance, pretty substantial chance. It's increasing by the second because like <laughs> I love so I'm gonna give a monologue about Christmas to our like one listener. Like our stream Italy restarted. Like we lost like coherent video. So. A bit of the start of the oh. podcast might have actually got, like, corrupted. So Carl's news oh. is he hit someone with his truck. <laughs> I, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't own a truck. <laughs> I own a Nissan Rogue. Uh, so if you're, if so you're you driving around bonus? Saskatoon trying to find me, uh, just look for the only Nissan Rogue. So you, I'm, guess, I'm just so you got sneak lot. attack bonus when you hit them, right? Because you attack them from behind? <laughs> <laughs> the, the dent in their vehicle is substantially larger than the small crack in, in my bumper, but sneak attack with Look, a finesse weapon actually, to, to the point the, to the point where uh, I wonder if the damage is actually from my vehicle or uh, if it's like it was pre-existing. Yes, their vehicle got in a previous accident, realized they could pin it on you, the wealthiest man in Saskatoon, saw you driving down on your 2008 Nissan Rogue. And then immediately cut you off and slammed on the brakes. And then ignited the sun with a solar flare as cover. Hey, uh, don't judge Nelly, the Nissan. Oh, that's she's a, a great she's name. A 2000, <laughs> she's a 2018 Nissan Rogue. You know, I remember so. the 8. Like, that's pretty good for me for how little I care about cars. <laughs> I take buses everywhere. So, uh. I apologize for insulting Nessie's honor. <laughs> Um, but yes, but, now that we've uh, caught them back up to this episode, what they really want to hear us mm. talk about. Not anime, not video games, not sci-fi and horror. Nah. We're here to talk butter tarts. We're here to talk shortbread. We're here to talk beverages. So Christmas cake, give us the download of those baked goods. We're now a culinary info food blogsters. Well, okay. Uh, so my girlfriend has a bunch of chocolate molds. All right, we're already um, off to a great start. Like, this is going to be a good story. 
Well, uh, there's not much to the story. Uh, Make there be so stuff she, to the story. You know, Come on. You got this. She she bought like a kilogram of chocolate. Uh, <gasps> not the pancakes. Kind, different kinds of chocolates. Carl. Unless you want to be divorced, do not make your special Carl pancakes. Well, no, those those were no good. Those Gotta are outlawed the right by of... the Geneva Convention. <laughs> well, the, the raspberry sauce is delicious. Well, yeah, much like we were talking about the rum glaze earlier. If you just whisk shab powdered sugar into booze. <laughs> it's not just powdered sugar and booze. There's also actual raspberries in there. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. Actually, no, I'm going to interject. So... When I had to make a cherry sauce at one of the places I worked, the entire mm. cherry sauce recipe was frozen cherries, mm-hmm. cognac, okay. cornstarch, mm-hmm. icing sugar, yeah. thyme. That sounds like exactly the same recipe as my raspberry chambord, except for you replace the cherries with raspberries and the cognac with chambord because chambord is delicious. We are not sponsored by chambord. But we could be. <laughs> I would love to be sponsored by Chambord because I don't know if there's any other raspberry li- liqueur options. Uh, but so good. You put, put a little bit in some ginger ale, you get raspberry ginger ale. Mm. Uh, I should put that on my list of, of five Carl drinks for, for you. Oh, right. Like, I was hoping we... Actually, let's bring that back on this episode. List the five Carl drinks as we talk booze and Christmas bakery for this holidays. <laughs> I mean, uh... The five that I sent you um, were spiced rum and ginger ale, which is pretty pretty generic, but a classic. Kind of feels pretty Christmassy. Uh, like, if we want to add a little more holiday cheer, let's switch out that ginger ale. You know what? Ginger ale feels pretty holiday, actually. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think you put, like, a couple Machino cherries in there for, like, the, like, holly berry effect to it. I think you'd be good to go. Mm. Ryan Coke with a lime wedge, which is definitely not Christmassy. That's... Uh, tell that to Coca-Cola's marketing team, brah. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't feel like rye makes it more Christmassy. Yeah, true. I feel like it has to be like Christmas rye or like some sort of candy cane schnapps. Uh, there's a drink that I call the Hungarian Cherry Bomb uh, <clears throat> because it's made with orange juice, golden pear, which is some sort of Hungarian liquor, uh, and cherry whiskey. Which also definitely not Christmassy. I mean, I don't know well, how I Hungarians disagree. celebrate Christmas. We did a but... Christmas shot every year at my parents' house, and I turned out perfect. <laughs> uh, this one, this one is definitely seasonal, definitely very um, seasonally appropriate. The salted caramel Baileys and chocolate milk. Yes. Mm. I you mean, can definitely, like, what would happen if you put right that whole thing through the milk throffer? I've been yeah, thinking know, about that for like three days. Out. I don't want to blow up your milk throffler, but in my brain, that sounds amazing. <laughs> oh, I don't think it would blow it up. Uh, Fire. And then the bikini martini, which is vodka, blue caraco, peach schnapps, and 7-Up, which is also like... I can't, don't wear I can't Christmas, Christmas bin that one, except my friend Jared, who's heading to the Barbados for Christmas. The rest of us know. <laughs> Your friend Jared's going to wear a bikini? <laughs> no, but, like, it's a bikini-themed drink is more appropriate there, I assume. I, I guess so. And then they, would they garnish it with candy canes or something? Like, <laughs> Maybe. I don't um, know. I'm not a dark wizard. But, uh, raspberry chambord. I always call it raspberry chambord. I don't know. I don't think there's any other varieties of chambord. So, I felt the need to look up raspberry chambord while we are having this conversation. Because mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, I swear you bought a bottle that looked cool, and then you're like, this awakened something in me. <laughs> so, as far as I can tell, Raspberry Chambord does lead to a game called Chambord Liquor. Doesn't say raspberry, but does explicitly feel the need to mention that it's a mix of black and red raspberries, but does come in mm. a black raspberry or a red raspberry form. Oh. So, do you want Chambord or do you want Chambord Royale? Ooh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, Saskatchewan doesn't get all all the uh, nice things like the rest of the world. Like, uh, there's no butcher shop in Saskatoon that sells ostrich meat. You know, when you say that we don't get the good things, and you say no butcher shop that sells, and I don't know what words I thought were going to come out of your mouth. 
But you know what words I absolutely did not occur to me were even a plausibility? Ostrich meat. Why? 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 Well, okay, so, I mean, if we have any American viewers or listeners, uh, we're, we're jumping the gun a little bit with this with this Christmas talk because uh, they haven't even celebrated uh, Thanksgiving They can yet. listen to this whenever they see fit. Especially when we call it Christmas cocktails. That's on them. <laughs> Especially the people listening live. Just listen live from the future. Okay? Like, go far enough into space that you hear this on Christmas. But, but so, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Food Theory, uh, they had a whole episode about uh, how um, in America, apparently, um, the majority of people still eat turkey with Thanksgiving. But apparently, it's the second worst uh, like rated as the second worst dish at a Thanksgiving dinner, uh, and, and apparently uh, more and more people are cooking ham instead of turkey because it's easier uh, easier to find smaller portions. It's, there's a whole bunch of reasons. I want to blame inflation though. Uh, but the um, the end of the episode was kind of like a surprise twist. Where they're like, "Yeah, but you want to know what's better than turkey or ham?" ostrich meat because apparently it's like filet mignon but you cook it like a turkey so i've heard good things about ostrich meat like ostrich burgers come up a lot in my circle somehow so i'm Mm. not saying don't go buy and eat an ostrich that sounds awesome (laughs) i would rather you ride the ostrich into battle like a knight but if you must consume a comically stupid animal ostrich is top tier but i just find it funny like Ah, oh, these these peasant butcher shops haven't at once caught a large legged wingless flightless <laughs> bird that's often used as video game villains because its uh, iconic shape is just so stupid that you can do it in eight bit easily. <laughs> well, all, all I'm saying is that I'm pretty sure uh, that there's only one variety of Chambord that has been in any of the liquor stores that I've been to in Saskatoon. So apparently uh, Chambord straight up was like fed to French kings, like it's like has like a dramatic storied history and everything. But there's red Chambord so and black Chambord. It, it, well, I mean, I, I would have to double check the bottle that that's in, in my house, but I, yeah, I can I can walk and talk. Can you? I'm going to go check out this bottle. Because apparently really it's considered sure a first tier liqueur. Well, it's super good. Apparently, uh, it's often used in the raspberry margarita or the French martini. Yeah, well, I don't know if uh, Chambord is like really Christmassy per se, but it has the right color palette. Like, to be perfectly fair, mm. if I put Chambord in Coca Cola and it tinted the Coca Cola kind of red, it would look Christmassy. And then you put a candy cane stir stick in that, you've won. Oh, yeah, that's true. You garnish anything with a candy cane, suddenly it becomes Christmas. Yeah, hmm. I mean, you to mean be fair, I don't think Louis the Sixteenth was particularly Christmas. Hmm. Maybe I don't have any Chambord left. Maybe I drank it all. It is really good, though, so that would make sense. I enjoy, like, the description where it's like, raspberries, blackberries, Madagascar, <laughs> vanilla, Moroccan citrus peel, honey and <sighs> cognac, steeped in French spirits for a period to create the fruit infusion after the infusion is extracted, a second set of spirits is added to the fruit and allowed to rest for a few weeks. Drama, 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 drama. Well, I mean, it is not, like, exorbitantly expensive, but it is definitely uh, more expensive liqueur. Like, because mostly I, I buy, like, Golden Wedding or, like, Kirkland whiskey. So it's like I, I generally game for the cheap stuff, but sometimes you just gotta have something that's classy and delicious. And it looks like the Holy Grand Grenade from Monty Python, let's be real, that's the main selling point. <laughs> it is a cool bottle. So, you know what's amazing? So, a few years back, me and Cassie were making Christmas biscotti. And we made it, like, have a five okay. variety of different flavors. But I'm gonna ask mm. then, since we started with Christmas cake, and we never actually got to describing the Christmas cake. Christmas cake? Uh the, the the Christmas cake, it, when you say fruitcake, that's pretty much what it is. Um, so there's like candied peels, candied fruit, and then like walnuts. And then uh, I'm not exactly sure what, what the actual 
batter was made with. But like, I know there's there's some whiskey poured in there because uh, my girlfriend's dad was like, you need to have whiskey in your in your Christmas cake. I mean, that makes sense to me um, for some reason. Currants, raisins, like just like pretty much just a normal like fruit cake, I think. But it's for some reason uh, it's it's mostly served at Christmas time. I don't really don't really get that. But the way the way my girlfriend made it, it was actually like light, fluffy, and kind of like uh, cinnamony. Because that's kind definitely of an bread. item that gets a bad rep. Like it's actually delicious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would agree. Like, but I will say that like one of my favorite things is my ancestral shortbread recipe. That's like four ingredients, and the main one is cornstarch, and the recipe is on the back of a cornstarch box. Because you remember, my ancestral <laughs> res- legacy goes back like three generations. <laughs> and it's like you make this shortbread and you, you can't fail it because it's mostly starch so like this cookie will be cookie shaped from now till the heat death of the universe you know some mm. people are like I make my cookies with no preservatives nah this cookie is just preservatives it's like equal parts powdered sugar and preservative but it's such a good cookie base and then I do things with it mm. to make majestic stuff like I made mini tiramisu butter tarts with the dough one year I like to put like little chocolate wafers in the center of them to make like a nice little pattern cookie I've done butterscotch glazes on them I've done caramel glazes on them I've done chocolate coffee glazes on them the cookie itself is just the vessel for the topping but because the cookie is so scientifically stable you really don't need to add much extra flavor to it to be like "Mm, this cookie with a hint of salted caramel ooh this cookie with a hint of Bailey's boom so those are my basic <laughs> shortbread, and I basically use them as a canvas to paint Christmas cookie on them. That, that is fair. I mean, one of the nice things about shortbread cookies is that they're very easy to, like, send with Christmas baking, because they're not going to, like, go bad or anything. Um, exactly. <clears throat> Christmas cake, it seems a little bit more difficult to actually, like, ship. I mean, it's fair. That's why I don't spending... ship people Christmas cheesecakes, because, like, I have limits as a human. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think you could chip a cheesecake very easily at all. You could not, even though they are delicious. So, well, I mean, that's pretty much the only thing I actually bake is is cheesecake. I like. You're cheesecake. not going to use a no bake cheesecake. What is this, Prussia? Oh yeah, last uh, the first couple times I made cheesecake, I didn't use the water bath, and I think that's part of the reason that it that that it kind of cracked on top, but. The last one I made, I used used the water bath, and then it didn't crack. And then, as per the conversation we've had, you made raspberry chambord sauce, which... Sounds so good. So, chat's crinkling in that crinkle cookies are delightful. The best Christmas cookie, according to chat, are crinkle cookies. Crinkle cookies. Indeed. Okay, I mean, it sounds familiar. I can't think of what it is. I'm going to Google that right now. Crinkle cookies. I believe in you as you do your research. Okay. Okay, so it looks like it's like a, almost like a chocolate cookie just co- coated in ice and sugar. I've definitely seen them before, and I'm pretty sure I've eaten them before. But hmm. and Like I said, Sprinkle we did cookies. like a bunch of different flavored biscottis one year. Like we did like a cherries, chocolate, orange bis- biscotti. Ooh. Terry's chocolate oranges. I don't know why those are festive, but uh, they're Same a very strange are festive, and delicious combination. They're not supposed to be. They're not supposed to be. Like it's so weird that oranges are a Christmas dish, is it not? Well, I mean, it is a little weird, it's like Christmas oranges. But yeah, those crinkle cookies mm. you basically make them with one of those like manual ice cream scoops, because you just pretty much mm-hmm. like you make them room temperature effectively to make them as buttery right. as dark magic will allow. Right. Right. And, like, you could do different flavors, but, like, the OG chocolate's where it's at. Mm. So, on the topic of Christmas foods and dinners... So, one year... my So, my oven is a wimp, full disclosure. I'm used to working in good kitchens, and when I have to work in my own kitchen, it's deeply tragic. So, I attempted to cook a turkey, but I pretty much mm. had to cook it over the entire night, and it didn't quite cook all the way through. Oh. So we had received a turkey and bacon as a Christmas present because I asked for Christmas cook. I uh, asked for Christmas groceries for Christmas one year, and it was amazing. So mm-hmm. I ended up bacon racking this turkey so the outside wouldn't dry out. Makes so sense. So imagine using two packets of salt of like good cracked pepper bacon 
to wrap around mm. a turkey to keep the turkey juices in as you cook the turkey. The thing was amazing. Mm. Normally a person that doesn't... That sound good. Because, yeah, the bacony shell kept the turkey from burning. Right. Uh, again, according to the Food Theory episode, um, they were saying that because there's white meat and dark meat in your turkey, uh, the white meat cooks faster than the dark meat, uh, which often leads to the white meat being very, very dry before the dark meat is actually fully cooked. But uh, so wrapping it in bacon just seems like a, that would just be a genius solution to the problem. Oh, yeah. Like, this was a fantastic time. I mean, what else would have worked is if I had, like, a convenient blowtorch. But we don't always have the ability to just torch the inside of the turkey. <laughs> Apparently, the CDC recommends not actually stuffing your turkey. Oh, yeah. Because while your turkey might be at the right temperature, your stuffing might not, and there might be food poisoning uh, bacteria in turkey your Turkey's such a gamble. Stuffing. So when you say, oh, I want to replace turkey with an ostrich, I'm like, you know, an ostrich in my brain, because I'm still thinking cartoons, is even bigger than a turkey. <laughs> but I don't think you're bringing home the ostrich. You're not bringing home a donkey-sized bird to eat. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, like, like I say, apparently its flavor and texture is more like filet mignon, and uh, the level to which you have to cook it to make sure it's actually safe to eat is much lower. So uh, it's, it's safer, apparently, as equally nutritious as turkey, if not more. And a very, well, different texture and, and flavor profile. So there's actually which one year growing was up. Probably, I'm sorry? So there's actually one year when I was growing up in Alberta, in Calgary, mm -hmm. City of Cows, and Texas Light for the uninitiated. Mm -hmm. And it was actually mm -hmm. like plus 20 out Christmas Day, so we did an outdoor barbecue for Christmas. Okay. And that's just amazing. Like, if you're having people together for a nice dinner, that's great. If you're having people together for a backyard barbecue, that's somehow even better. <laughs> I do love me a good barbecue. Although, to shift the topic... I don't topic, know if you ever posted the episode about the the barbecue did we ever actually post the, the episode about uh, barbecue? i'm sure we did and i really hope people listening to this that go through our entire catalog looking for the barbecue episode <laughs> and never find it <laughs> so on the topic of barbecues and holiday festivities mm -hmm. so my question to you is are you a fan of secret santas well, I'm not really sure what that has to do with barbecues, but I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I'm just in a holiday it. mood on this random redacted day of the year that is absolutely not Christmas. I'm feeling the Christmas spirit today. I, mean, I, I don't mind the Secret Santa. I mean, I personally really like to get people, like everyone that matters to me, a gift. Uh, and so usually if, if there's a Secret Santa, uh, I'll participate. But then I will also get people a gift that's just like for me because I just want to. So I'm going to explain my secret Santa woes, and I'm curious your take. Okay. So my classmates are like, you're doing secret Santa with us. And I'm like, part of me wants to be like, I'm old and stuffy because compared to you, I'm ancient. And the other part of me is like, but I'm just a little baby. I'm like 30. That's not an adult. I want a video game and a gift. It's just fun. <laughs> so okay. I agree to do it begrudgingly being like, yeah, I guess I will allow my presence with you kids. It's fine. To these 25 mm -hmm. year olds like you do mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. here's what was weird though so they found an app called elfster okay. elfster is for holding the secret gift exchange where it gives you the you put the number of people you want to do the gift exchange right and then it randomizes mm -hmm. the name so each person gets the person they get but it's also like right. you post your like online shopping list on there for what you would like for your gift it says the <laughs> price limit okay and the idea is that oh you can list a bunch of things that you want for secret santa and then they're like, right. yeah, it's really cool because you can make sure to get pe things people things people they want because it's on their list and they picked one on their list. I kind of hate it because I kind of oh? hate the idea that for Secret Santa, you're supposed to like espionage, research and figure out what this person would like and then get it, right? So if people just post mm. like their shopping list and feel free to disagree. I think that kind of takes a lot of the spirit out of it because the idea is if it's, you've got someone you don't really know, you then have to, like, Columbo this. And, like, oh, they just posted their Amazon wish list on the seek directly on this app. It's like, will they get upset if you give them something that's not on their list because there's a specific list? And if so, is everyone involved a terrible person? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I would say um, <clears throat> generally the way that, that my family does Secret Santa is that you draw names 
And then I don't really, uh, one person just kind of has to know who has everybody. Uh, and they distribute the lists of what people want for their secret Santa. Uh, so it's like that when you, when you say you got a list, it's like this app just kind of sounds like a genius solution where nobody actually has to know whatever, who got everybody and everybody can post their lists and, and everyone can be happy. Uh, but I mean, I do like the idea of the espionage. I just uh, didn't realize this was a spy episode. Well, our spy episode, maybe it aired, <laughs> who knows? But I'm just like, it's a weird idea to me. Because for me, it's like, when I gift shop, part of the goal is to try and like figure out what somebody wants. So it seems like mm-hmm. I don't normally hand people wish lists. Like, I remember mm. when I was dating Redacted once upon a time. I'm like, what you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm writing up my wish list for Christmas for all the things I want. And that's a thing people who aren't me do. But because I grew up lower middle class, if not upper poor, mm. it would be like, I would get like a thing or two things. So I didn't right. really ever write out a list of things for multiple people. It'd be like, my mm. parents would get the list of two or three things I wanted, and me and Jeremy would just, well, when we were younger, we wouldn't just split a bottle of booze in a new video game and call it a day. Well, <laughs> but like this year, we'll probably find a game we both want to play, buy each other a copy of it, buy each other a bottle of booze and call it a day. Right, right. So it's an interesting notion that I'm not used to the idea of telling people what objects to buy with links to their shop pages. Because that just doesn't quite match my well, okay, ghetto okay, chic but, Christmas but, vibes. Uh, but so I mean, like, y- you gotta keep in mind like the the price list and who you're trying to like get stuff from. Uh, so like, my secret Santa list for my family was like juggling balls, tiddlywinks, uh, coin cases for my coin collection. Uh, and so it's like, it's Don't like lie cheap to me and tell like... me that's not your actual list for everybody. I know who you are. <laughs> You're telling me right now that if I were to send you tiddlywinks, you wouldn't be absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> I would love to receive like 10,000 tiddlywinks. <laughs> but all, all I'm saying is it's like, so, you know, you, you think about like stupid little knickknacks that you might want. Uh, that you're not going to buy for yourself, but there's something you might enjoy, and that's what you put on your Christmas list. Uh, but, like, it's not not the same as, as, like, requesting a gift from someone, in, in my opinion. Like, that's... Because, like, that's I like it the, as a list the of... Ins- of like, the game. I like the theory as a list of inspiration, which is why I started this with being torn on the topic, right? Because mm. the idea of, like, oh, here's some hints of the kind of things I would enjoy. I see mm-hmm. the logic. And I kind of see the appeal. Like, I did enjoy, like, populating my list of things I wanted, which has a surprising amount of Kirby-themed winter gear. (laughs) Okay. Like, you don't want a Kirby toque that you would never buy for yourself. (laughs) I just think it's interesting that if you're doing a gift exchange, particularly as an icebreaker, that part of the challenge would be getting to know somebody's interests, but I might be overthinking it. Uh, I mean... I suppose so. I mean, I, I can never really see how you, you would you would view the game as that, like in that way because like Secret Santa, uh, it is kind of a, a game, and not necessarily just to uh, go buy people's stuff kind of thing. Like it's, it's about the social interaction for sure. Um, Plus, I'm pretty anti-capitalist despite that, being an entrepreneur. I, I do think that a lot of people have have lost that that social spirit and there that's the list kind of aids with that disconnect. Well, it's like, what? even for you, for example, mm-hmm. if you're uh, like, yeah, me and Carl meeting up for Christmas, I would kind of be <laughs> upset with myself if I couldn't find a gift that you would enjoy by just trying. Right. But mm-hmm. also it's like, yeah, a list is handy. If you gave me a list of things you wanted, it would definitely make it easier. Even if I didn't pick off the list, I'd have a solid sample size. Right, right. But like I said, I'm weirdly torn on the issue. Because I don't really want to just buy something, somebody something from their hypothetical shopping list. Because that's like... Kind of even took the middleman out of gift giving at that point. Because like, say your shopping right. list was like, Yeah, I want volume 9 of Full Metal Alchemist. 
I want a new set of boxing gloves. I want a slap chop. And I want Chambord black raspberry flavor. And I'd be like, does that limit me to have to pick off this specific list of things? Oh, well, no, I would definitely say the list is not supposed to be a limit. It is definitely supposed to be But I'm mildly uh, concerned due to, like, the youthfulness of my colleagues in this event, that if I don't choose something off the list, they'll be displeased because... Capitalism? Like, why would you go off script? There is a script in front of you. <laughs> I don't know how well they'd take me throwing it in the garbage and being like, yeah, I got you a custom dice set. And they're like, why'd you get me a custom dice set? I'm like, because I want to play games with you and we're friends. They'd be like, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> or of like, Carl, I bought us matching Nerf guns. You're like, that wasn't on my list. I'm like, yeah, so we can shoot each other with Nerf guns. And he'd be like, oh, that's awesome. And then proceed to shoot me with the Nerf gun while I was explaining the Nerf gun mid-sentence right between the eyes. I'd, I would pretend to be all sad that it wasn't something on my list, and then when your back was turned, I'd shoot you in the head, for sure. Right? And that's that's what Xmas is all about to me. <laughs> like, loving trollmanship is the perfect Xmas. Like, the getting the giant refrigerator box and putting increasingly small boxes until someone opens a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> getting Having them open a bottle that they think is delicious booze for it to be hot chocolate them to be kind of sad and then they open the hot chocolate king and it's the booze to go in it like there's bits you could do and like it almost feels lame to be like here's your gift receipt like if i buy oh, something man, that someone needs to return because they'll likely get two of them i feel like i christmas wrong <laughs> so i mean my, my parents uh well my dad in particular absolutely loves uh driving people insane with crazy wrapping ideas uh, one year, he got my mom uh, a cashmere sweater, um, but uh, he put it in like one of those clear vacuum sealed bags, and he just <laughs> sucked all the air out, and it ended up looking and feeling like a bag of, of vacuum sealed sand. <laughs> that's so good! Oh, that's so good! <laughs> he just he just put it under the under the tree. It was just the, this transparent bag, and it looked like sand. And my mom was like, "Ah, what is it? Ah!" And then she opened, and it was this, you know, very nice cashmere sweater. <laughs> that is so good. Oh, I love that. Meanwhile, my mom and stepdad are like buying each other tile saws and things. I'm like, that's so weirdly wholesome. <laughs> tile saws. <laughs> and they think, the that's thing is, I kind of have the opposite problem with my brother, though. There's no sense mm -hmm. in buying him a Christmas present. Right. Because we've kind of hit like homeostasis at this point, where I'll be like, I could spend this money on you in our like shared bank account at this point and buy you a thing. Or Wait, you got, you're married to your brother? Is that what I'm hearing? Not quite. It's more like I've exhausted every possible avenue of surprising him at this point in life. Okay. So instead, it's just going to be, all right, listen, I got us two dual decks. Let's play some cards. Boom. <laughs> Although I've always been a fan of gifting activities rather than positions whenever possible. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, a good. Like, see Christmas earlier sentiment. Nerf gun example of like, yeah, no, I'd rather give Carl the gift of shooting me than an actual object, <laughs> or at least have an object that we can then like discuss and things like. If I were to get you a box set of a book, for example, the goal would be so we could then discuss said book. Hmm. Or like, I would just get uh. you like a hand, and you'd assume it came from one of your enemies and be emotionally touched. <laughs> the hand of one of my enemies. <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm just a starving student, so it's like, you'd be like, Vlad, what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, food? Shelter? Oh, yeah, I'm, I know you've been a, a starving student for a long time. You just want cash money, which makes me a little bit sad, but it is just genuinely the most practical gift for you. I mean, to be fair, though, my earlier rant about, like, any touching gift will still, like, melt my heart. Like, I go the next day to campus after Saturday, like, Sunday, Monday, I'm like, how are you today? I'm so happy Carl bought me a game out of nowhere. Ah, for the King 2 is awesome. And I'm just like on cloud nine because I had received a free video game I wasn't expecting for no explainable reason. I'm like, I feel what? so special. It was totally explainable. We, we were going to stream it, so we both needed a copy. There was no logical reason for me to have turned on my computer and had a free video game on this indescript Saturday. That was just awesome. 
<laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad you appreciated it. Uh, like, I'm still in a good mood for that. I'm like, I just was not expecting to receive a thing on this random day in December and November. Oh, man, I got, I got, I got pretty excited today, actually. I, I shouldn't talk too loud because my girlfriend's in the other room, but um, I, uh, I had a co-worker, and she likes to, like, knit and, and crochet and yeah. whatever. Um, and so I asked her if she could make a uh, Lilo and Stitch doll for, for my girlfriend. Oh, oh I love right. that. And, and then, then she quit, and it was while I was on holidays, and so that, and I couldn't get a hold of her phone number, and I was really worried that she wasn't actually going to you know, follow through on this. But I messaged her today, and she's like, oh, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I'll have it done in like a week. I'm like, oh, no way. Oh, I love that. Because like, despite me ranting about making chat books at the start, I love the idea of chat books. I just have thread and needle trauma specifically, and the mental mm. picture of our audience, and for you specifically, of me, fully grown man, beard and all, being handed a needle and a thread and be like, sew this book. Just picture the expression on my face. <laughs> it would be like the equivalent of handing Goku a math textbook and being like, to fight in the next tournament, you need an 80 average in algebra. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, but I trained my whole life to do the other thing. I'm so good at the other thing. No. <sighs> Random side tangent. Uh, Master Roshi actually did teach them like basic math and, and like literature and stuff. Like Master Roshi was training method was actually surprisingly well rounded. They just, you know, abandoned that. Well, it's principle. so weird that like Dragon Ball Goku was somewhat smart, but a troll. Dragon Ball Z Goku was Clark Kent, and Dragon Ball Super Goku has a brain tumor. <laughs> I was not literally, at least I don't think, but like, yeah, he's definitely received more brain damage or something because he's just a completely different character. I remember we had this talk where you're like, we were watching Dragon Ball Super, you're like, <laughs> how did Goku become the abridged Goku? Like, yeah. he's closer to the Dragon Ball Z abridged depiction of Goku than the Dragon Ball Z depiction of Goku. Just straight up. That's how that works. Although I will say... I, mean, I, I feel like super, but... The Dragon Ball Z abridged Christmas specials are actually amazing. Not related, <laughs> but I think after this I'm going to watch Christmas Tree of Might. Oh, also completely <laughs> unrelated. It was going to be a backup topic because I don't actually remember. Were you ever into Scott Pilgrim? Uh, we talked about this very briefly off stream, I think. Yeah, but you might have binge watched, read it, or watched it afterward. Oh no, no, I, I have not. That's fair. Is there anything interesting? Like, I know One Punch Man. I was checking out today, and was like, "Blast ninjas cubes!" <laughs> wow. See, it feels like it's actually going somewhere, but it can't be going somewhere because, because it's like One Punch Man, and that's just not how that functions. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like deeply curious, but I know it's trolling me. Unlike Boruto, <laughs> where I'm deeply displeased and it's not trying to troll me. <laughs> You've been trolled, even though it's not trying. <laughs> its very existence is just kind of like insulting. <clears throat> There's an uh, evil clone of I'm... Sasuke in Boruto now. Yeah, I don't really. I don't... That just doesn't. Nothing about it makes sense. I think that did more damage to you than me. Because I'm like, yeah, because I went, yeah, sure, why not? And you're like, uh, why? It was just like, they set this up to be like a, a big reveal. And then they're like, oh, yeah, those are divine trees that are somehow the trees aren't gone. The, the bodies of the people aren't gone. But like, they forgot to make it good. That's what happened. They forgot to do anything good with this. And then, so, the other day I was walking through Indigo with my friend Will. Mm -hmm. We go through the manga section, and he's only watched one anime. Well, two okay. and a half animes. And because, like, we work on games and books and things together, he's kind of, like, mm -hmm. researching it. But without the tolerance, the vaccination that things like fairy tale give you to the garbage that's in anime, it's hard mm -hmm. to recommend people anime and manga in a vacuum, right? Right. Because there's like, yeah, anyone could get enjoyment out of Full Metal Alchemist. JoJo's is mm. weird. But like, I'm looking at shelves, I'm like, mm, 
Nah, uh, if it has if it has a Master Roshi Bulma moment, the show's off the shelf. It'll just cringe them out too hard. Right. Like he just gave up on Dragon Ball after that happened. <laughs> Which is fair for the record. That the <laughs> old man pervert is pretty, really archetype on, too. is pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, okay. that does not hold up to modern sensibilities, nor should it have held up to old sensibilities. So we're going through <laughs> and we get to Chainsaw Man. He's like, What are your thoughts on Chainsaw Man? I'm like how can I put this eloquently? I think it somehow very maturely handles stupidity. Like, I think Chainsaw Man's actually good, and that's deeply concerning. Chainsaw Man is actually good. Oh, man. Like, it's like, the show, see, it's like you read the premise, you're like, oh, this is going to be degrading to women, and then it's just not. And then you look at it, and you look at it sideways, and you're like, huh. This has no right to be good. Because Den Denji is just, he's trying so hard to have a consenting relationship. Like, that was such a big plot point where he's like, the one person's like, do you like me more or do you like them more? It's like, I like them this much, I like you this much. Cool, I'm not going to kill these people! And I'm like, oh, Denji, buddy. <laughs> oh, he's trapped in a toxic relationship for sure. He's always trapped in a toxic relationship. <laughs> it's just so deeply unfortunate because he didn't do anything wrong this time. Has Denji actually ever did anything wrong? Uh, no. Uh, his dad left debt to, debt to him from the mafia, and then the mafia cut him up and uh, left him with his little cute little devil dog that was like, "Hey, you've never done anything wrong, so I'll give you my heart as long as you show me your dream." Well, it's kind of funny as I was explaining Chainsaw Man, right? I'm like, you know, the funniest thing is like. <laughs> It's like, well, how do you get his powers? Like, the devil looked at him and like, I feel so bad for you. <laughs> the liberal devil's like, oof, you have it rough. You know what? I, I might give you a hand here because this is just sad. <laughs> oh, poor uh, Denji. But with that, we move to our random questions of the week. This one's a fun one. Okay, if okay. you had to describe how you're feeling right now as an amusement park ride, what ride are you on? Oh, that's a top tier question, though. Um, so, so you know what I'm feeling right now? I'll start on this one. OK, I'm counting water parks as amusement parks for this. OK, I'm on one of those lazy rivers that ends with like a sudden drop like the one's like, yeah, and then it just drops you at the end. Those are sweet because I'm chill right now. But I'm like, yeah, and I'm just going to go splash, splash. <laughs> well, I mean, uh. I, I would say I, I feel like a like a Ferris wheel, you know, it's a, like, kind of like slow moving, but it is like I'm on top of the world and I can I can see a beautiful scenery, you know, it's those give me panic nice. attacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we give my girlfriend panic attacks, too. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm on a Ferris wheel. Oh, no. Are you OK? <laughs> oh, well, I haven't actually been on a Ferris wheel in a long time. Uh mostly because in terms of amusement park rides they're they're fairly mediocre and a lot of people are so scared of heights and don't like being you know put in a small box that you might never come down from gee i wonder why you just made that sound so appealing <laughs> <laughs> uh so that's our first random question which is a top tier random question and our second one is an amazingly top tier random question too if you were coming out onto okay. a stage what would your entrance theme song be Oh, wow. So, I know this is a little basic bitch of me, and despite how much shade I throw at this particular series, it feels almost unfair, but I kind of think that Ichigo's theme song, the Now You Feel Like Number One by Harold Fernandez, actually slaps. And for whatever situation, <laughs> I'm coming onto a stage, it blaring Now You Feel Like Number One, shining bright for everyone. Like, if that's my entrance to, like, sell a book or something, oh, that's nice. Like, especially if that somehow is associated with me, the person, where I'm not doing an homage, that's just my theme song. 10 out of 10. Mm. Well, I, I mean, mean, unless you, I can I find actually... the, like, MP3 of the theme song you wrote me. <laughs> oh, well, you didn't actually like my the theme song I wrote you, so that's, that's I didn't okay. I dislike it. I just don't think I understood <laughs> it. I don't think 18-year-old me understood the classical waltz you were going for. <laughs> interspersed with with uh, 
Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, dual music and uh, the Final Fantasy victory theme. <laughs> I honestly think current me would probably appreciate it a lot more, because I'd actually understand what I was listening to. <laughs> I was actually gonna go go out and say though I I uh, I Were think you I might really have claim it as uh, actually, your own? no 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 I have my own theme song which is where this was going I, I wrote my own theme song <laughs> um and I mean it's not exactly like pump up get you dancing music but I mean I like to think that I would be going out on stage in like a play or something I can see that I feel uh, like you'd be the Princess Bride rap remix. <laughs> that you had scored and orchestrated and were pre- presenting. And you're like, yeah, I t- took the energy of Hamilton and gave it to the Princess Bride. <laughs> well, so my, my, uh, my theme song is more of a, a, a like a uh, elevator music, gentle swing, kind of jazzy. So, I mean, like, I, I don't really know if it would be appropriate even, but I, I think I would like to have my, my personal theme music that I've written, that I've written. Uh, be my entrance song onto the stage. And then if it is an act, then it's like you, you hear that theme song and you'd see me just bumbling onto the stage and you'd know that something funny is going to happen. That is very fair. Although my brain right now is trying to like come out with like a nice smooth flow for like, you killed my father, prepare to die. Oh, bold words of yours. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. On guard, on guard. <laughs> oh, man. The Princess Bride, definitely. I, I would say it's probably actually my favorite piece of media. <laughs> um, the I saw the movie first, so it has a little bit more nostalgia. Uh, but I've read the book too, and there's lots of details that make it that are obviously in the book that don't make it into the movie. Uh, they're both excellent pieces of media in their own right, and the, as a combination, they're that's got to be my favorite. That's piece very of media. fair. Although I always find it funny when I watch a manga or an anime, I'd be like, the production team in this anime is trying so hard it's actually higher quality than the manga. It always blows my mind when it happens, because the book is supposed to be better. And when the book's not better, I'm like, really? Hmm. But with that... I I would definitely definitely say for The Princess Bride, the book and the movie are equally good. I think the only thing I've given that level of credit to is probably Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Like, I think the move is. I think you can actually make an argument that the uh, extended edition director's cut of Lord of the Rings is actually the superior form of that thing, which is insane to me. <laughs> and I do believe I'll be insane. taken down the off the internet, not for like the flippant remarks or the rants about the class that literally dropped my internet connection because there's so much rage. Nah, it's because I dare to say a movie might be better than a book. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I highly recommend cozy drinks, possibly chocolate milk through the milk frother. That got some rave reviews when I dropped this very concept to my friends. They're like, wait. How uh, really? So, like, milk throthers might be being secret santa to people. Because <laughs> people are like, wait, you can just do that? You put chocolate milk in the milk frother? Oh, yeah. They're like, it's what? So what is this dark magic? <laughs> Like, like, I saw a face, like, you know the face of, wait, you're allowed to do that? And their eyes just sparkle. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> well, I've never, like, that's like an OG Carl creation. No one else is going to think to try that, even though there's no reason you can't. <laughs> I, for one, want to take, like, that powdered French vanilla mix, like, mix that in with, like, chocolate milk, mm. like, mix that powdered French vanilla in with, like, milk or like light cream and then put that through a throffer and get like the fluffiest French vanilla ever made like I'm like there's some science at work here (laughs) but with that (laughs) thank you everybody for tuning uh, in give Christmas cakes another try indeed don't give Boruto another try (laughs) and have a lovely Uh, day uh, just you have a lovely day without any Boruto It'll make your day worse. You could eat cookies or you could watch Boruto. But if you watch one, you won't enjoy the other. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Uh, but seriously, what a random episode. Like, it's just going to be called, like, Christmas Cookies. <laughs> Christmas Cookies. Richard and Carl present Deep Space and Dragons and Christmas Cookies?
This is a Boruto for his own. Just change the logo to just a picture of the Boruto manga with a circle and slash through it. 